Hi everybody and welcome to Lecture 7 of Digital VLSI Design at bar Ilan University. I'm Dr. Adam Tiemann and today I'll start discussing placement. So let's start with a short introduction to today's subject. Let's remember where we are in the complete design flow. So we started our um, of course, talking about the entire flow of making a chip. It started with some definition and planning stages that we didn't go much into in this course. And we discussed a little bit about RTL design, um, discussing how to write Verilog for synthesis and how to write test benches. And verification, we just did some direct test benches. Our course really started at logic synthesis when we synthesized our design into a technology mapped gate level net list. Then we went over down to physical design stage, which uh, we've been dealing with for the last two lectures. We started with importing the design into the place and route tool, um, defining our multi-mode, multi-corner, and so forth, and then drawing up a floor plan. Today, um, we're going to go into placement, um, where we have a design with a floor plan that has pre-placed blocks, some power routing, and so forth. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take all our net list, which is full of all these standard cells, and actually decide where each and every single cell sits in the standard cell or core rows. Just a question, a short question to ask before we um, start discussing how to actually do placement. When people say chip size, what are they exactly talking about? So when somebody says, uh, I'm building a 100 million gate ASIC, how big is it actually? Well, when we look at a real design, we can see that small cells dominate. And um, Rob Rutenbar uh, made this plot several years ago. It took a 206,000 uh, gate IBM ASIC, and he looked at a histogram of what the cell sizes are and you see that the width of the cells there are very few very tiny cells but there are a ton of small cells in fact most of the cells are um, small there are very few big cells probably the cells over here are some macros some IPs that are really really big but there are whatever flip-flops and so forth may be on the right side here but most of the cells really are small so small cells dominate um, therefore when we discuss what a hundred million gate ASIC is we usually discuss them as equivalent small gates okay um, we can also consider these big macros to be uh, many many small gates so when we say a hundred million gate ASIC we actually usually say gates as equivalent NAND2 gates so we'll take NAND2 it could be uh, some other gate and in many of the tools you can actually define what this um, what this actual reference gate is, but uh, say a NAND2 because CMOS likes NAND2 gates, so we say that's a size one, and then all other gates will size that, we'll see what their size is according uh, to their, ref uh, their relative size to such a NAND2 gate. Um, when we discuss the number of instances, we're talking about the number of things placed, and that's much smaller than the number of gates because there are gates that are um, big, and so uh, there are very few instances, uh, there's only a couple of instances for uh, number of NAND2 gates. And same thing with uh, macros. So if we take a, an SRAM macro, it may be several thousand or even more than that um, NAND2 gates. So just as a rule of thumb, um, depends on your design, of course, but you can say that the number of instances is about the number of gates divided by four or five. And remember, uh, the complexity of our algorithm actually has to deal with the number of instances. And in fact, what we're going to be discussing today is with the number of standard cells and not the equivalent um, gate size of our design. So now I'll start discussing what our um, central issue for this lecture is, which is placement. So placement is the stage of the design flow during which each instance, or each standard cell, because hard macros we usually place by hand, is given an exact location. Our inputs to this stage are a net list of gates and wires that came out of our synthesis, and we have the floor plan and the technology constraints that came from our importing the design and drawing up the floor plan. The output of uh, this stage is that all cells are located in the floor plan. Each cell has some sort of a placement, and the goal of this is that each of these cells has a legal placement. Uh, a cell cannot sit in the middle of a row. It can't sit over here. It has to sit in between, uh, uh, right on a row, in fact, in a site, in a certain um, legal location. Um, it can't be overlapped and so forth with other cells. Um, we need to do this while en enabling detailed route. So in the end, we're going to uh, go and do place and route here in a little while. And we have to make sure that we're able to actually connect all of the um, uh, the, the, the pins and the nets that should be uh, that, that should make up the net list. So um, we'll see that our placement stage has to enable this. It's very important. Um, and as a third 
goal, we want to meet the SDCs that we set, the timing, area, and power targets of our design. So those are the three goal, main goals of the placement stage. How does the flow go? Um, most tools, like almost every stage that we've done so far, use two or even more stages. They start with some sort of global or rough type of stage. In this case, it's global placement. What we'll do is we'll divide our, um, our design into different bins. Um, bins, sometimes they call them global cells or something like that. And we'll try to minimize the number of connections between the group. So we want to have uh, to make sure that uh, for congestion reasons, we don't have too many connections between the groups, but we're going to decide where each and every cell is going to fit in a, in a very rough way. Then we'll go into detail placement where we'll take these cells and kind of uh, shuffle them around a bit until they actually sit in legal locations with no overlaps and so forth. And then we may put all kinds of uh, different optimizations to try and minimize the wire length or other cost metrics. So uh, when we finish our design, we want to have uh, an uncongested design, so we'll be able to route it. And here we're taking a very old channel routing base type of a picture, but this is just a picture I found somewhere. And um, what you can see here is you have uh, these standard cell rows and you have the routing between them is very nice. There aren't many crossovers. These are flight lines that just show which pin has to connect to which pin. This will probably be routable pretty easily. On the other hand, we could have done the same thing and just by mixing up the places of, uh, of these cells in each row, we could have had all these crisscrosses and there's not much of a chance that we'll be able to route such a design. So that's a bad placement. 